Praise the Lord. With all my heart, I will thank the Lord in the assembly of his people. How wonderful are the things the Lord does. All who are delighted with them want to understand them. All he does is full of honour and majesty. His righteousness is eternal. The Lord does not let us forget his wonderful actions. He is kind and merciful. He provides food for those who honour him. He never forgets his covenant. He has shown his power to his people by giving them the lands of foreigners. In all he does, he is faithful and just. All his commands are dependable. They last for all time. They were given in truth and righteousness. He set his people free and made an eternal covenant with them. Holy and mighty is he. The way to become wise is to honour the Lord. He gives sound judgment to all who obey his commands. He is to be praised forever. Amen. A prayer of adoration. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come before you today to praise and worship you. We may be separate from each other because of the lockdown, but all are part of your family and loved by you. We praise you for your creation as we think of mountains and valleys crashing waves and gentle streams, the cold winter winds and the warmth of the sun, and the variety of plants, animals and birds in beautiful colours. Thank you for your faithfulness. As we see signs of spring in early snowdrops, we know that the winter will pass and your hand will guide us into better days. Thank you for your love, your grace and your mercy, and the knowledge that you know each one of us by name. Lord Jesus, we praise you that you were willing to give up your home in heaven to come to earth 
as a valuable baby and grew up with a family, friends, and a workplace. We thank you that we can read about your teaching and preaching as you challenge us to turn away from everything that hinders and distracts us and to follow you wholeheartedly. When we think of your death on the cross, we thank you that through your sacrifice we have been forgiven from our sins and we can start a fresh, a new relationship with you. We worship you, Lord, that all authority in heaven and earth has been given to you and you know sit at God's right hand. Holy Spirit, we worship you this morning. We thank you that you are our guide, our counselor, our teacher and friend. We praise you that you comfort us in our distress and sustain us through the difficult times of worry and anxiety. So we praise Triune God that you will be the focus of our worship today. The Father who loves us, the Son who hears us and the Spirit within us, in the unity between us and in the life that we live. Amen. A prayer of confession, let us pray. Loving God, as we come before you now in the quietness of this building and focus on the cross, we are conscious of the many times we have behaved in ways that are contrary to how you want us to behave. When we have been so busy that we have neglected to spend time with you and read your word, forgive us. When we have spoiled the beautiful world that you have made with our pollution, noise and greed, forgive us. When we have been unkind to other people in what we have said, thought and done, Lord, forgive us. When we know what we should do, but we have deliberately ignored your teaching and your prompting, forgive us. Thank you that you hear us as we come to you to say we are truly sorry. Restore us and bring us heavenly joy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 8, the question about food issued to idols. Now concerning what you wrote about idols, it is true, of course, that all of us have knowledge, as they say. Such knowledge, however, puffs up a person with pride, but love builds up. Those who think they know something really don't know as they ought to know, but the person who loves God is known by him. So then, about eating the food offered to idols. We know that an idol stands for something that does not really exist. We know that there is only the one God, even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, and even though there are many of these gods and lords. Yet there is for us only God the Father, who is the creator of all things and for whom we live. And there is only one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things were created and through whom we live. But not everyone knows this truth. Some people have been so used to idols that to this day, when they eat such food, they still think it is food belonging to an idol. Their conscience is weak and they feel they are defiled by the food. Food, however, will not improve our relations with God. We shall not lose anything if we do not eat, nor shall we gain anything if we do eat. Be careful, however, not to let your freedom of action make those who are weak in the faith fall into sin. 
Suppose a person whose conscience is weak, this matter sees you who have so-called knowledge eating in the temple or an idol. Will not this encourage him to eat food offered to idols? And so this weak person, your brother for whom Christ died, will perish because of your knowledge. And in this way, you will be sinning against Christ by sinning against your Christian brothers and sisters and wounding their weak conscience. So then, if food makes my brother or sister sin, I will never eat meat again, so as not to make my brother or sister fall into sin. Amen. Hello, Sutton Park Circuit. Um, some of you will know me, some of you may not. My name is Craig Gaffney. Um, I was, I'm a student presbyter and last year I was at Stockland Green. Um, sadly, because, uh, because of timetable rearrangements due to COVID, I've not been around for a while, but because I've just finished a placement module, I will uh, now be back uh, with you. Um, and I'm looking forward to, to worshiping with this, this community in the Sutton Park Circuit again, uh, and looking forward to to getting involved in things and looking to find things to get involved with as well. So if you've got anything, uh, please let me know. Um, got some good news to share with, with those. Uh, so obviously I was at, at Stockland Green uh, before, but I've just found out where uh, I will be stationed uh, as, a, as a presbyter uh, in September. Uh, and I can let you know that I will be going to the Blackheath and Crystal Palace circuit uh, in London. I'm going to have uh, pastoral responsibility for three churches uh, down there, and that's something uh, I'm really excited about. So if you could uh, hold Louise, uh, my fiance, and I uh, in your prayers as we look forward to this move, uh, then we'd be really grateful as we continue to hold uh, this circuit in our prayers at this current time as well. <clears throat> the Gospel of Mark. Chapter 1, verses 1 to 28. Jesus and his disciples came to the town of Capernaum, and on the next Sabbath, Jesus went to the synagogue and began to teach. The people who heard him were amazed at the way he taught, for he wasn't like the teachers of the law. Instead, he taught with authority. Just then, a man with an evil spirit in him came into the synagogue and screamed, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Are you here to destroy us? I know who you are. You are God's holy messenger. Jesus ordered the spirit, be quiet and come out of the man. The evil spirit shook the man hard, gave a large scream and came out of him. The people were all so amazed that they started saying to one another, what is this? Is it some kind of new teaching? This man has authority to give orders to the evil spirits and they obey him. And so the news about Jesus spread quickly everywhere in the province of Galilee. Amen. <laughs>
My friend Margaret is, like many people, finding lockdown hard. We are used to going out for a coffee and a slice of lemon drizzle. But she's only been out once since March, and that was to her husband's funeral. There were only six of them there. So at the start of the year, she asked me to write a meditation for her. Something about hope that would give her something to focus on. Heavenly Father, sometimes life is hard. The mountains are too high. The sea is too rough. Our path is obscure. Strengthen our trust in you, Lord, that every hill will be made low, the darkest valley become light, and the ragged places smooth. Thank you that you came to earth, born as a baby in Bethlehem, to bring hope to each man and woman, boy and girl, wherever they are, in every generation. Amen. Okay. Prayers of intercession. Heavenly Father, we bring to you our concerns for other people and for ourselves. We pray for those we know who are unwell, at home, in hospitals and in care homes, and those who have been affected by COVID-19. Grant strength and fortitude to all who work in the National Health Service and as key workers that they may continue to care for those who are ill. We pray for those who have lost loved ones and are unable to grieve. May your loving arms comfort them, that they will be aware of your power upholding them. We pray for those who live in Zambia, Zimbabwe and South Africa. We think of those affected by unemployment, shortage of food and scarcity of resources, which is compounded by the pandemic. Our thoughts are with those who are unable to access medical and nursing care, families who are bereaved and children who have become orphans. We pray especially for our minister, Reverend Dr. Jimmy, as he cares for and ministers to the members of the Zimbabwe Fellowship in the UK. We pray for the new president of the United States of America, Joe Biden, and his team as they make decisions that will affect the lives of millions of Americans. Thank you that he will rejoin the discussion about climate change and conserving the world resources. May we learn to treat our world with care and respect and share our good gifts wisely. Lastly, Lord, we pray for ourselves. Thank you for our many blessings which we fail to acknowledge as we should. We thank you for our family, friends, and our, commun and our church community. Help us to be diligent in supporting and encouraging each other and sharing your love. May you guide us, Lord, in the decisions that we make, that our name will be praised and your kingdom grow. We will now have a minute of silence. We pray, pray that, that we'll accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers and unspoken, unspoken prayers to all our hearts in the previous name of Jesus, Jesus our, our Lord, Lord and, and Saviour. Savior. Amen. Amen.